first episode on the channel where we've moved from the allotment into the kitchen and I'm going to show you a quick and easy way of using some of these strawberries that I picked yesterday from the allotment to make strawberry jam. It's a very simple recipe, only uses three ingredients and a little twist at the end that makes the recipe a little different. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you like the video, then give it the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos in relation to how to sow and grow fruit and veg and recipe ideas, then subscribe to the channel. So let's go and make some strawberry jam. So one of the first things I'll do is to clean and sterilize the jars that I've been collecting. Now these jars are old jars from things that we've used uh, over the last few months. Things like olives and there's uh, salsa sauces uh, and they're perfectly good. The, these jars will be sterilized three times in boiling hot water and then they'll be dried and then sterilized the final time before I put the jam into them. My only advice with the jars, if you are going to use jars, stay away from jars that have things like curry paste and really strong smelling um, things in them. Something to do before you start anything is to take a small plate and put it in your freezer. We're going to use the frozen plate at the end of the recipe to check that the jam is ready. So for this recipe we need just three ingredients. Fresh strawberries, granulated sugar and a lemon. The proportion of sugar to strawberries is weight for weight. So if I'm going to weigh these and I have four pounds of strawberries, I'll use the equivalent weight in sugar. You can reduce that slightly, but remember this is jam, so it will contain a lot of sugar. You're not going to eat the jam, well you're unlikely to eat the jam all in one go, uh, but it is a very sweet preserve uh, and therefore it does involve a lot of sugar. And that's it, three ingredients, very, very simple, nothing else needed. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare the strawberries. Now when they come off the allotments or wherever they are, make sure that they're thoroughly washed. These strawberries have been washed a couple of times uh, because obviously I took them off the allotments. Some of them have had a little bit of mud on them, but now they're completely clean. So once you've got the uh, strawberries clean, you then need to prepare them. Now simply just, so I just cut off the end very thinly there and then I will cut them into quarters and then put them into a bowl ready and you'll do this with all of your strawberries so just cutting them off you can use other methods of preparing your strawberries but this with the amount of strawberries that you get on the allotment you don't really waste very much by doing it this way so just cut them in quarters they don't need to be any smaller than quarters because as you'll see when we start to cook the uh, the jam all of this will dissolve down anyway because i've seen some recipes where they suggest that you mash the strawberries but um believe me that really is not necessary you can see now I've filled the uh, bowl up to about just over halfway and there's still plenty of uh, strawberries left so I'll have the chance to either make some more jam or make something else with those strawberries, possibly a strawberry crumble. So those are now ready. Um, when I was cutting them it just come to mind that if you get really small strawberries then you only need to cut them in half, you don't need to cut them in quarters. I'm just going to grate the lemon just to get the, uh, the rind off because this is where you'll get the pectin, which will help to solidify the, uh, the jam. We're going to take the whole rind off the whole lemon. And then once we've done that, we're going to extract the juice, which we'll also put into the, uh, into the mix. Now we're going to extract the juice of the, uh, of the lemon. This will all include everything, including the seeds, but we're going to sieve it in a minute. So that or it'll just be pure lemon juice. I get rid of that one and the other half as well. There we go. So we'll just uh, run that through a sieve, and that'll get rid of all the any anything that's not uh, part of the juice, and then we'll be able to use that in the mix as well. Now all the strawberries are cut and ready. I've just weighed these. Believe it or not, there's three pounds of strawberries there in their cut state. That means that we've got to use one, two, three pounds of sugar. And yes, I know that seems like a lot of sugar, but as I said earlier, this is jam. We've also got our lemon juice and we've got our lemon rind fond from one lemon. And all we're going to do now is mix it all together. So we'll put the sugar into the strawberries. and give it a good mix 
I'll just mash it in. What you'll see will happen now is that the strawberries will start to absorb the sugar and they will draw the moisture out of the strawberries. So we just put in all of the, uh, mix in all the jam in, so that the jam, the, the sugar, into the strawberries until you'll start to see moisture starting to appear. And there you can see now we're getting more moisture. And then when you're halfway through mixing, just put in the lemon juice and the lemon rind and give that a good mix as well. You can see and probably hear that it's already going into a liquid or a slush. Give it a good mix. Now what we'll do is we'll probably leave this for an hour or so, put some cling film on it. You can put it in the fridge, but it doesn't have to be in the fridge. And then it will really start to liquefy down. So that's well mixed there. We'll come back in a little while and then we'll go to the next stage of the process. Now that the jammy syrupy mixture has uh, had a chance to absorb, you can see it's quite liquidy now. That is just sweet strawberries and that's what's going to form the basis of the jam. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to transfer this to a saucepan. Make sure we get everything here. For the next part of the process, we're going to switch the, uh, the jet on and we're going to start to gently bring this liquid or this syrup to the boil. This is one of those recipes where you need to stir constantly. You can't go away and risk the uh, jam sticking to the bottom of the pan because once it does that, then you've lost the whole batch. So we're going to bring this to the boil gently and when it comes to the boil, you'll start to see it uh, form a, a, a froth on the top. We're going to gently at that point lower the heat so that it's almost on a simmer but we keep stirring. So uh, just be prepared to be constantly looking after the jam and uh, not uh, being able to, to leave it. As it's starting to get warmer, heat up, you can see it's starting to get a more of a pinky colour and that's the foam that will form at the uh, top. But notice that we've had no liquids to this. This is just purely strawberries, jam and lemon. There's no need to put any water or any, anything else in here because there's enough moisture or juice in the strawberries to form the jam. Remember to keep stirring and keep an eye on the heat because uh, it has the potential to, to boil over the top of the saucepan. So you need to regulate the heat. With a batch of about this size, I've, I'm guessing because of the jam I've made before, that we're going to be boiling this in total for around about 30 to 40 minutes. But we will don't know exactly because each batch is different and you just have to test it by sight and by the test we'll do at the end. As it starts to heat up, you'll notice that the liquid starts to become much more smooth and that's because the strawberry is starting to dissolve in the liquid. You can see what's happening here. You can just see if I skim through the surface, underneath it's a darker red. But just get this, and this foam will disappear eventually through the cooking process. If you like a smooth jam, then this will uh, almost uh, completely dissolve the strawberries. But what I'm going to give you at the end is a tip to uh, add certain, uh, some strawberries in to have some more of a chunky strawberries if that's what you like. You don't have to do that, but that's just my tip for. Uh, making the strawberry jam a bit more chunky if that's what you prefer. It's starting to heat up now, the foam is starting to get uh, a, lot, uh, a lot more, a lot thicker. And we're just at this point keeping an eye on the temperature because it could potentially boil over. What we're going to do is lower the heat and then we'll boil it and continue to stir it for about 20 minutes. Then we'll check it and probably have to do that again for another 10 to 20 minutes depending on its consistency. So, when, so I've moved the jam onto a slightly smaller jet and you can see now the foam uh, is very, very pink in colour and that's the natural process of the uh, cooking. That will reduce right down. The foam will completely disappear towards the end of the cooking process uh, and the jam will become a much darker red. Remember to keep stirring um, all the way through 
uh, and just keep an eye to make sure that the foam doesn't reach the top of the pan because it will boil almost like milk and it will go very quickly and you really don't want hot sticky jam syrup all over your saucepan and all over your, co over your cooker. So just be vigilant when you're cooking it, uh, cook it at a general reasonable uh, moderate heat and during this process you might be tempted to think as you're stirring it that it feels very very watery and how is it ever going to make jam but uh, don't worry, don't panic, it will thicken once you've given it the right amount of time. So if it feels very liquidy at this point, that's not a bad thing, that's just normal. The foam is starting to calm down a little bit now. I'm just starting to the tops of the strawberries and if I just leave it for a few seconds you can just see bubbling through the colour or the red of the strawberries below. So this, so, so this is the jam after 20 minutes. You can see that the foam is reduced right down and you can see the darker colour red underneath. So that's it's starting to also feel that it's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to probably end up boiling this for another 15 to 20 minutes to get it to the consistency that it, uh, that it needs. So this is the jam 40 minutes after it originally started boiling. You can see it's a lot thicker and it's also a lot darker. In order to check the jam set, we can do three things. The first thing we'll notice that the pink foam that's been present mainly through the whole boil has virtually gone. Secondly, the consistency of the jam will thicken up. You'll actually feel it as you stir and go from a, a watery liquid to thicker. And the third test is to take the plate that we put in the freezer at the beginning, take a teaspoonful of your jam, put it on your plate, and then we will wait for the uh, jam to cool down just a little bit. Then we'll put our finger through the jam and it'll have to, as long as when we, we stand it up, the lines actually don't move, then the jam is ready as it is there. So when it cools down, that jam will set. One final thing is that if you like your jam smooth, you can leave it as it is. But this is the extra tip I was gonna give you. If you like little lumps of strawberries or a little bit chunky, then I've cut up some uh, a small bowl of uh, strawberries into halves and quarters. And I'm going to put that into the jam before I put it into the jars. Just mix that around. And because of the heat of the jam, they will soften slightly because that jam is still very, very hot. So that will allow you to have chunky jam if you want it. So the next stage then is to put it into the jars. So those are the jars that I'm going to put the jam in. They've all been sterilised and cleaned uh, a couple of times, so they're absolutely spotless. I filled them with hot water before putting the jam in because you don't want the jams to be cold because otherwise the jam will, won't set properly. So warm them up and then empty the water out just before you put the boiling hot jam into them. And then when they're jarred, put them in the fridge and then they will set um, naturally and you'll be able to use them for the following day. The last thing to do is to put the jam in jars. Now this jam's very hot when you take it off the uh, stove, so uh, just be careful as you're bottling it. So you take the sterilised jars that you've, you've cleaned, uh, you've taken the hot water out of them, and then just carefully just uh, spoon the, the jam into, into the jars. These funnels are quite useful, and they just save you touching the hot jam. So fill it up to near the top, as it is there, just take the funnel out and then put the lid on. And then what I'll do is I'll just wash the, uh, the jars of the jam so that there's no stickiness on it and then put that in the fridge and that'll be good to use in the morning. So as you can see, there's five jars of jam there, but actually there's six because my sister-in-law took one before I had a chance to, uh, to finish. So uh, that's what three pounds of strawberries makes. All that will now go in the fridge to set, and um, no doubt we'll be giving some of that away to uh, some of our friends and family. Look, here is the finished jam taken out the fridge. You can see the consistency of it. Now this actually set. So I put on a nice scone, a nice dollop of jam. Look at that, it's beautiful. And then give it a quick little squirt of cream there you go and then you've got nice uh, jam scone and cream beautiful and you can use a jam for lots of other different things as well